Hi everyone, my name is Kara and I'm a thyroid warrior of Hashimoto's autoimmune disease and today I'll be discussing detailed information on thyroid testing. An estimate of 20 million people in the United States have thyroid problems. 12 million, 60% of those people are unaware of it. Women are 5 to 8 times more likely to have thyroid issues than men. At one point I was very sick from my autoimmune disease. I truly didn't feel I was ever going to get better. After a ton of research, I finally found my answers. I now feel learning about this information was the best thing I did to help heal myself. I know having thyroid issues can be very confusing. I've been there myself. One minute you're having symptoms of fatigue and the next you're full of energy. You may be thinking, why do I feel this way? This isn't me. Why can't any doctor help me? Am I ever going to feel healthy again? What do these tests even mean? Don't worry about those thoughts. I know it can be hard, but with learning you will realize you can guide yourself on a journey to healing. There are three types of thyroid testing. The first one is blood work. It is the most convenient. It can be used to diagnose hyper and hypothyroidism. Also, it can detect autoimmune diseases such as Graves and Hashimoto's. Ultrasound is the second test. It is used when a person doesn't have detectable antibodies in the blood. Nodules and change of thyroid can be seen with ultrasound. It can also detect antibodies that tested negative on blood work. Biopsy is the third test. It is used when cells are removed from the thyroid gland. This is used to determine whether nodules are cancerous or not. Now, let's get into the levels that are measured in your blood work. So what is TSH? Before answering that, I want you to know I have been in the situation where I was so confused on the large amount of thyroid information out there. But I promise, it does get easier to understand. Okay, so what is TSH? TSH is used to see how your thyroid is functioning. It is the most popular level tested when you go to the doctor. Low TSH equals hyperthyroid. High TSH equals hypothyroid. Hyper and hypothyroid will be discussed soon, but let's focus on TSH for the moment. What's so important about TSH? Well, in the body, the hypothalamus releases a hormone called TRH to the pituitary gland. When the pituitary receives the TRH, it releases TSH to the thyroid gland. This TSH causes the thyroid gland to make two hormones, T4 and T3. One negative about testing TSH only is that it can catch some issues, but not all. Doctors sometimes think TSH is the only level they need to test. I am here to say that is not true. TSH may not always catch an autoimmune disease until it's too late and your thyroid tissue is damaged. Autoimmune diseases can be present in the body for over a decade until the thyroid starts to break down. You may hear from your doctor that you're fine, your TSH is in range, but somehow you have many symptoms. By no means should you rely on TSH only. You will need further testing to figure out the root cause of your issues. We now know when TSH is released, it stimulates T4. If your body isn't functioning properly, levels can fluctuate. So when you have low levels of T4, you will see an increase in TSH to signal the production of more T4. High levels of T4 triggers your TSH to decrease, to lower the production of T4. What happens in the body is T4 is converted into T3. With these thyroid hormones, every cell in your body depends on them to regulate metabolism. When T4 and T3 are active in the body, it is called free T4 and free T3. However, there are many other things that can disrupt your thyroid hormones, such as low salt intake, autoimmune diseases, benign tumors, cancer, congenital defects, certain medications, and thyroid surgery. Hypothyroid and hyperthyroid can come from an autoimmune disease. For example, 90% of people diagnosed with hypothyroid have Hashimoto's disease. Two tests that look for autoimmune diseases are TPO and TGAB, sometimes called TG. When you test your TPO and it comes back high, that can indicate your thyroid issues come from Hashimoto's or Graves' disease. 
TGAB is used to check blood levels of antibodies the body has made against itself. So what exactly happens in your body when you have an autoimmune disease? Your immune system makes antibodies that mistakenly attack your normal tissue. The higher the antibodies on your blood work, the more likely you will develop an autoimmune disease. What if your doctor is telling you everything looks good with your blood work and you don't need any further testing, but you know you need to check other levels aside from your TSH? My advice in my experience is to show your doctors you know what you're talking about when it comes to your thyroid testing. When I started to learn about all the tests that my doctor wasn't giving me, I had to demand for them. There isn't anything wrong with telling your doctor what to do because it is your health and you are in charge. Not all doctors will give you problems asking for more tests, so be positive. Always remember the six T's when requesting blood work from your doctor. TSH, free T4, free T3, TPO, TGAB, and reverse T3. Now you're going to learn how to read these tests. Stop the video and write the functional ranges down. When you get your blood work back, you will see something called lab ranges near your results. Do not go by these ranges. They are wrong. These are a very wide lab range due to skewed results. These ranges are a combination of healthy individuals along with people that don't have properly functioning thyroids. The lab range for TSH is 0.5 to 5.0, but research shows 95% of people without thyroid issues have a TSH below 2.5. So going by those ranges are why many people are misdiagnosed or not diagnosed at all. Take a look at the ranges below. These are the ranges your thyroid should be functioning at. Once you compared your blood work with the ranges, you have two categories you fall under. One is hypothyroidism. This is when your thyroid gland does not produce enough thyroid hormone. If you don't fit within the hypo category, hyperthyroidism is the second type. This is when your thyroid gland produces too much thyroid hormone. These are just some of many symptoms, but take a look and see if you match either hyper or hypothyroidism. If you have hypothyroid symptoms, there are two types. The first one is primary. This occurs when your thyroid isn't functioning properly. Your blood work can be shown to have a high TSH, low free T4, and normal or low free T3. The second type is secondary. This occurs when your pituitary gland isn't functioning properly. Your blood work can be shown to have low or normal TSH, low free T4, normal or low free T3. Hyperthyroid usually can be identified when you have a low TSH level, high free T4, and high free T3. Now that you know all the levels you should be tested for, what if your doctor refuses further testing? You can now order your tests online. Here are some of the labs you can check out. My Med Lab offers efficient and affordable testing panels such as thyroid levels, food sensitivity, and more. Ulta Lab Test offers many blood tests and lets you submit the bill to your insurance for reimbursement. Spectracell Lab offers more advanced testing. They test for the MTHFR gene, amino acids, fatty acids, carbohydrates, metabolism, and more. Direct Lab offers many different blood testing that you can't find anywhere else. If you are interested in the self-order lab testing, these are the real links in the video so you can write them down. So just a little recap, always demand the right blood work. Remember the six T's, TSH, free T3, free T4, TGAB or TG, and reverse T3. And always ask for a copy of your lab results.